So I'm going to share uh, a challenging left main bifurcation disease in acute myocardial infarct. This is a challenging uh, case because we are going to discuss what the plaque morphology in this kind of acute MI and how to prepare the lesions and what is the stenting strategy and how to assess the result. So let me start. So this is 80 years old male presented with acute myocardial infarct, the troponin was elevated uh, and 2014, he had a PCI to LED two stents and a PCI to circumflex one stents. CFRI, uh, hypertension, smoker, and dyslipidemia. You can appreciate here the ECG showed the ST depressions in inferior lead and AVL ST elevations uh, in AVL. And then there is a ST elevation as well in the AVR. So this is really a very serious acute MI. So uh, LVF was 46% with anterior hypokinesia, normal renal functions. Core angios showed triple vessel disease, left main bifurcations. And syntax score was 25, euro score 0.99. Uh, patient was offered to have a cabbage, origin cabbage, but uh, he declined. Uh, so we decided to do uh, PZI. So, so this is the diagnostic angio. You can see here, there is a moderate disease of the mid RCA, and there is a, a disease, significant disease at the uh, postural astral. This is the left uh, coronary disease. You can appreciate a very severe distal left mean involving a circumflex and the LED, sluggish flow at the LED, is uh, another view of the left coronary. So based on this information, uh, we did a pre-dilatation using 2O millimeter balloon and then followed by IFOS assessment. This is IFOS run from uh, LED to left main. Yeah, we see the other stent and which was okay oh. expansion. Yes. And left away, we see the Karushfai nodule. So you may want to play again. Okay. Yeah, so starting at the distal, uh, there is an old stent, and stent expansion is okay. Not fantastic, but I would say almost real, right? And not too much neo intima inside, but the vessel is much, much larger. And stand stopping here, and then that's already circumflex from the six o'clock and left domain. That's a very typical picture of the calcified nodule. So we have to remember when we see the MI patient, we think everybody is thrombus. That's true. And we think most of the region is very soft because of the lipidic plaque and thrombus. But we have to remember 5% of the cases is actually very calcified, such as this case, calcified nodule causing the MI. So this is really uh, typical calcified nodule causing the MI. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Akiko. And this is, uh, we tried to assess the circumflex to left main, but I first get, uh, got difficulty to go deep to circumflex. So uh, we just, uh, gut information at the osseal part of circumflex to the left main. Yeah, just play. Yes. Uh, so at least we know calcium. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Sitting on the ostium of the sarc. That's the yes. point, right? So yeah. it seems to be the calcified nodule is really uh, sitting in the bifurcation which protruding to the left way and protruding the LED and also the SARC. So it seems to be, this is really by IVAS definition, one, one, one region. So, uh, that, doc, yeah. so can, what do you think? Can, yeah, <laughs> can I ask Dr. Ro for, for you to, to discuss about this case? What is your strategy? After you see the bifurcation, let me now one, one, one with the heavy calcifications. 
Yes, I think so. um, still, if if uh, we try to persuade the patients to go for <laughs> cabbage if possible, but uh, if we are to do uh, uh, PCI, then I'll make sure the patients have uh, good hemodynamic support. I don't know what type of hemodynamic support you have in terms of mechanical circulatory uh, support. I think regardless what the uh, what you call the, the the hemodynamic is before you proceed further, I think I'll make sure that is uh, uh, put in place. Um, uh, it's definitely Medina one one one. We have to intervene the ostium of the 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 cirque, uh, given the fact that uh, it's calcified uh, uh, and badly diseased. I think we need some form of artrectomy. Because the uh, LED uh, stand is so close to the ostium, I think orbital artrectomy, I think we shouldn't, shouldn't use that. I think it's a difficulty because it's absolute contraindication in terms of uh, pre-existing stand. So I think rotational artrectomy is quite, quite, uh, is, is the way to go forward. And certainly my, my skill is not as good as uh, many, many experts in terms of uh, directing into the uh, why well, of course calcified nodules, but we'll try to uh, need to, to, to make sure we control the wire bias to, to, to deal with it. Some people actually suggest IVL can, can work for uh, calcified nodules or eccentric plug, but I'm not too sure. I, I haven't done that many, some you know, less 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 than less than five cases IVL. So so I don't know whether the rest would, would, would like to make any comment. And uh, in terms when it comes to standing, uh, I think it's a upfront two stand strategy. And uh, you know, knowing uh, Fauzi, I'm sure it's a DK cross. It's just like another day in in the office for him. <laughs> okay, um, I think that's that's all. That's all I, I have to say. Is so I don't know whether anyone else have anything to add. Thank you, Doctor Rowe. Doctor Lin, you have any idea of this, Doctor Lin? Yeah, I think it's definitely the one maybe the one 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 region with calcium spot and. Uh, uh, um, Rotation astrectomy, I think, a little bit dangerous for this case. Uh, but uh, I think uh, maybe I will try uh, some scoring balloon uh, first to the uh, lemon to circumflex mm-hmm. and lemon to the uh, LED, and then to see what happened uh, with the IVAS to see what happened after the uh, this scoring or cutting balloon procedure. And then for stenting, I think that's a, I will choose close stenting for this uh, lemon bifurcation region. That's my opinion. Okay, thank you very much. Dr. Fassi, please. Yes, at that time, I was surprised with the, uh, the flag morphology. And uh, I will, at that time, it is better I refuse to do PZI. <laughs> but, uh, but thinking that we have to do the best what we can do, and the flag morphology uh, reveal that this is a calcified uh, calcium nodule, which is a calcified uh, plaque. So we, c- we cannot avoid it to let it be, but we have to do uh, lesion preparation well before uh, doing a stenting. Otherwise, the stent is not uh, well uh, expands and then going to be worsening situations. So we decided to, to do a rotational atrectomy due to the, the, uh, the flow at the LED was sluggish. Then we chose the route from the left main to circumflex. After several uh, uh, try, we can manage the, the bird can pass the circumflex. So uh, I chose the 1.75 because we not only to modify the plug, but trying to debug as well. That's why uh, I chose this kind of the uh, bird size. And this is the post rota I was. From LED, uh, yes. sorry, circumflex, sorry, yes. sorry. Yes, from LED circumflex. Now you pass the IVAS into the circ. Yes, any idea? <laughs> Should we start the stand? Yeah, or... yeah. Okay, so I think that's a very good picture, meaning that there is a very clear reverberation and polished surface, which is concave shape, which is coming soon. So let's go a little by little. So this is okay, calcium. Soon, go ahead. 
that one here. Yeah. So three o'clock, you yes. see the nice shape, which is concave. And then behind, you see the double layer, or even one more layer. So that's mm -hmm. really reverberation. And when you see the reverberation after the rotor, that's indicating that you polish the surface well. Because after polishing the surface, rotor sound can deflect much more than without. And then we start seeing that this type of the reverberation. And always we see the always we see the effect of the rotor at the site of the wire bias, which is IBUS is located. So you should look into the where the IBUS is located. And then if you see this type of the reverberation, you did a good job. And originally you remember the Kaljify node is concave Bex and then protruding to the lumen, but now you see this some kind of the hole, which is yes. yeah here. Yeah. That's very really different compared to before. Doctor Akiko, okay. can I ask you the questions? Like you mentioned about the reverberation and uh, the calcium, the calcium crack on the IVAS finding. Do you think that only the reverberation is enough for putting the stand on, or just proceed uh, another balloon dilatations? I, I, I think the answer is no, because reverberation is really you polish the surface. And it's not indicating the stent, uh, calcium fracture. But when we look into the sequence of the IBUS or OCT, typically calcium fracture occurs at the site of the reverberation. Because you, I believe the surface of the calcium is the hardest. And then when you polish the surface, you have a more chance to make in the calcium fracture. So, but I think the very severe calcified region, you should see the fracture before stenting that's really secure the stent expansion. That's my opinion. Thank you. Please, yeah, I, would, uh, I would agree with Prof. Kiko as well. I think it's important to see the fracture before we put the stent, that's important. So what do you think guys, uh, whether we have to proceed to stent or we have to uh, do a further pre -dilatations? For me, do the pre dilatation first and protect the left man. So, you, okay. what you're doing, Dr. Farsi, we are very <laughs> exciting to see. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, as I mentioned before, that we have to do uh, well prepare or uh, well preparations before putting the stand. So that's, uh, as uh, Dr. Akiko said, that this is, uh, we confirm the successful rotablation. We can see the concave shape of calcium nodule, nodule and reverberations. So we perform further pre dilatation using scoring balloon, using to LED and to the circumflex, to high pressure scoring balloon. Uh, at the time, I chose a 2.5 15 millimeter scoring flag, score flag. Uh, might be it is better using the high, uh, yeah, so size up the, the, the balloon. So, do you agree uh, what the pre dilatation, the further pre dilatation, or you have any other modality to prepare such kind of situations? Dr. Lin? I think I will still, still using bigger balloon because I think uh, from the IVAS, the circumflex and uh, the LED Austin at least is three, three or three five uh, in by by uh, millimeter. So I think the, for the for safety or the be better standing expansion, I think the uh, bigger balloon or or even uh, after small scoring balloon and far will followed by the bigger. Uh, uh, non-compliant balloon to, to for the uh, lesion preparation. That is my opinion. By the way, we published the paper after the rotor with without uh, cutting balloon or scoring balloon. Uh, is it better compared to the regular balloon? And we see it better, meaning that it seems to be like the synergy effect, meaning you have the rotabulation and then you polish the surface, and then you do the scoring or cutting balloon, we see more fracture afterwards. That's we found based on the serial OCT or IVAS picture. Yeah. Even so, in the prepare calc uh, study, I think uh, in a lot of the percentage of the patients who had uh, in the prepare calc trial who had rotational atherectomy, a large percentage of patients actually had 
uh, post dilatation with uh, score flex or with scoring balloons afterward uh, or cutting balloons afterward. I think it was up to 30% nearly, if I remember correctly. Can I, can I ask a question maybe to Prof Akiko and the panel, sir? Um, in the presence of calcified nodules, would you be more conservative when it comes to balloon sizing, stand sizing? I think that's a good point because we see the calcified nodule, but remember there is eccentric calcium and then other side is actually relatively normal, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, I think, typically we see. That's, I think, concern, but Typically, we don't see an issue because no one side is stretching well. Yeah, so I think actually the calcified nodule, acute stent expansion was not too bad. But recent paper show us like the even the good stent expansion at the end of the procedure, you may have the poor outcome if there is a calcified nodule. And then when we look into the follow-up IBS OCT, actually calcified nodule reprotruding the stent slot or making the fracture because why the calcified nodule is, I do believe the calcified nodule due to the fracture of the calcium and then always happen at the bending portion of the artery and the more likely causing the fracture. So we don't know what's the best strategy to treat the calcified nodule yet. It seems to be really the bad people, but bad region. But go back to your answer. I, I don't think that's a very big concern uh, because relatively normal segment stretching well. Yes. Okay. Dr. Fauci, please. Yes. Uh, actually, I'm fans of cutting balloon, but at the time we run out the cutting balloon in ourselves. So we use the scoring balloon. And then uh, we decided to do decay crust strategy. This is our decay crust steps. First, we put a 3023 drap diluting stand at 12 of ATM, just protruding to the left main. And then uh, we prepare the 30 balloon with, uh, we understand this is actually we, we used to. Uh, use a, an, a bigger balloon at that uh, left in LED. But anyway, we try to crush it. And then afterward, we flare the circumflex stand until to 18 ATM. We pull a bit uh, the balloon and then flare to the 80 ATM. And then afterward, we crush the circumflex uh, stands used after uh, removing the balloon. And then uh, we perform first kissing balloon. And afterward, uh, putting 3.5 uh, DS from the LED to left main. And then uh, followed by uh, using a, a pot, using a 4.5 uh, balloon. And then uh, followed by a second kissing balloon, 3.5 in the LED and the TO10 to circumflex. And because of the constant of expansion at the mid of part of the LED, we use the, uh, we do a distal optimization technique and followed by report. And this is the final result. Excellent. Uh, looks fine, right? Yeah. And this is the LED, uh, post IF, PCI IFOS, the LED. So this seems to be uh, still all the stand segment because I see the nail into my inside. And now it looks like that this is new stand. There is no more nail into my inside. And I think a good expansion because I was, it's all, this is almost 3.5 in terms of the diameter. And that's the osteum, I guess, is coming. And circumflex is six o'clock. And this is a left way. And left way will oppose. And then I check the edge of the stent. And we remember the proximal segment was OK. Actually, that's protruding to the, yeah. So based on this picture, I think the overall LED is really looks good. And left way is also good. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see the silicon flight run, right? Or yeah. any other any other op uh, opinion regarding the IFOS LED left me? I think it's perfect. So so can see the circumflex 
Okay. Uh, so starting the non-stent segment, which is distal segment. And now you see the stent, there is no HD section, that's good. And actually landing is really good, meaning you didn't left some disease, right? And then we are coming to the proximal and there is a calcified eccentric calcium in the nine, but I would say, okay. And you see the osteo but, the cirque. Uh, maybe the noise uh, will <laughs> refill. What, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> Stop wrong, let uh, the Let the panelists uh, uh, refill. Yeah, so it, it, it's a little bit difficult, uh, I was. Yeah. I stopped speaking. Yes. <laughs> The quiz, this this uh, this kind of quiz of the uh, how the eye was revealed of the circumvulus. Mm. You got, I know it looks like you got it. Yeah, so it has some malposition, that's right, at the off the off the circumflex, but but I think it's it's always not perfect at the bifurcation to stand like this <laughs> all the time. If you try to collect everything like this maybe four or five hours for the one, one case like this case. And what are the other panelists? What do you think? Do you accept this, this finding of IOS at the bifurcations? Yeah, for me, myself, I think I will accept it, Anurag, because uh, like you mentioned, it's, it's difficult to have 100% perfection, especially in this kind of situation. Of course, we we, we see some, some what do you call it, the, the area is not covered by the struts. But I don't know how max we tolerate this uh, Akiko in terms of the IFAS. For me, I just accept it. Okay, I think one thing which you comment, very important things. You, I believe you said somewhere not covered the stand, is this correct? Yes, yes. You said, right? So you recognize somewhere, even the two stent technique was not mm -hmm. covered by stent. You recognize, correct? Mm -hmm. Wow, mm -hmm. that's that's really good. Okay, that's like actually the question of this picture. It's a little bit uh, uh, advanced Ibis picture. I I try to stop myself. Yeah, yeah. Here, that's. Could you stop? I, I have. I I almost. <laughs> Could you stop the place where we are talking about? Excuse me. Uh, hold on. Here. Yeah. Yes. Stop. Thank you. Yes. So this is really the ostium of the circumflex. Mm -hmm. 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, no strut. Mm -hmm. That segment is a Kalina site. On the other hand, 9 o'clock, you see two layer. So I do believe when the first rewire to the circumflex wire is a little bit too distal, and then you bring in the strut from the Kalina side to the other side, making the gap at the ostium circ. And you picking up perfectly, you said, not covered strut. That's very difficult, I was. Yeah. I'm, I'm so, pleased. Fauci, you have to put the OCT on again. <laughs> 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 oh, this kind of technique. Okay. So, uh, yes. We have short time to discussion in this case, Fauci. Can you wrap up? Okay. <laughs> so this is a real look of L6 left mean IFUS for that IFUS style, as uh, mentioned by Professor Akiko, that there is uh, some uh, at the cardinal side, it's not covered by the stent because the stent strut all uh, go to the opposite side. But uh, unfortunately, I recognize after finishing the procedures, after real look, the IFUS. The ECG showed a very uh, a better ECG compared with the previous one. And the post-PCI echo showed the looks a global uh, uh, contractility, uh, global contractility was fine. And this is seven months uh, later. I follow up, this still fine. Mm -hmm. There is that, although there is some sort of misstep 
in the uh, DK Cross strategy. So that's what my name. Don't waste a uh, good mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Congratulations, Fasi. So, yeah. all right. So, uh, yeah, we are getting hot and hotter here, and then. <laughs> Like we have, we have very think, nice discussion. Yeah. Sure. Sure, let, Iko, let me please. explain one more thing. Sure. I think actually this story tells us what is important, what is may not be important. We see this type of the super detail in the extra trial, and actually we see the gap in the two state technique is eleven percent. If I see very detail, but nobody recognizes eleven percent. But this case is completely fine, patient no problem, right? We don't know how yeah, it looks yeah. like inside, but this should be fine, right? So to be honest, I'm not sure how that tiny thing effect of the outcome. And still the importance is a good stent expansion in each segment, right? Yes. But if you recognize better, and if you check why a position before giving the ballooning, the wire to more proximal, that's even better. But those things we have to con uh, consider in the future, but still there is no data, such detail effect of the outcome. Yes. So I have to say that is the, that, that is the typical uh, good case for the left domain modification PCI by IVUS guidance is uh, as uh, uh, Akiko said that is the without uh, IVUS guidance is uh, that uh, must happen is a disaster. But we, we didn't know the, so what happened inside. So it's a, although there is just a still a gap is a, a, without standing side. So I think I believe that there is no issues in the future because it's a quite nice uh, minimal is a stand area. So it's a, it, it will not happen the, is the blood turbulence or something like that. But is the, if the is the stand area is small in the bifurcation left main, so it's a blood turbulence makes something is a thrombus or a, is the other things. So it's a, this case is a really, really nice and typical is the IVUS optimization for the left main bifurcation PCI. Agree. Great.